break that shit, Julian. Let's do it. Yeah! Yeah! Happy you're here, Julian. Dude. You're gonna have a good time. I am so happy to be good. here. I usually don't paint, and I Excellent. like recently started drawing again. By the way, drawing utensils. Oh. Like charcoal and whatever you want. Oh, yeah. cool. So you started drawing. What's, what, how, how, do you, how did that come about? Actually, um, I started drawing mm -hmm. when I like started going to therapy. Excellent. Like, a lot Shit, of it, yeah. and I had like a ton of time. Yeah. Um, I had a ton of time and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't on my phone, I wasn't in my house and I didn't have like a guitar around to be like, oh, I should be ah, working. I should yeah, be working. Totally, I should be creating something in this mm -hmm. hyper specific way. Um, but so that didn't happen. Uh -huh. I just started drawing for, awesome. for like no reason. Love it. For absolutely no intention. That might come in handy soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> also, yes. I have no idea how to attack this. Awesome. Zero. What are you thinking? I don't even know what I should do. I'm just going to make a big line, I guess. Let I me say this. This is my friend Julian Baker, and this is Make It Perfect. I'm <clears throat> very happy she is here. And Make It Perfect? Yeah, that's what it's called. You like this? <laughs> You're just like, co yeah, awesome. with me, Hell yeah. make it perfect. That's so great. It works, great. yeah, totally. Because, right. I mean, that's what we're going to do, right? Okay. We're going to make it perfect. Yes. So, Julian and I um, took a walk in San Diego Park, what, a couple weeks ago or something, shit mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. yeah. And it was awesome. Sat at a park bench, talked for a while, and, and kind of got uh, a little uh, to know each other even better. And uh, I feel like every time we talk, maybe you deal with this with people, it's like, well, certain people, you just go through the earth in subjects and back up. Yep. Okay. So hopefully we can do that and uh, we're just going to paint. So thanks yeah. a lot again. Yeah. Um, all yeah. right. Maybe I'll just. I always start at the top, man. You start at the top? Yeah, all the time. I don't know why. I don't. Okay. So I like. Not all the time. Did you just correct yourself because yes. it's not completely accurate yes. to say all and, the and time? Yes, we talk about Dude, how, okay, God, I do that same. You just want to be true. Some, oh, you want to be true so badly. It's some OCD. There it is. Shit. Yeah. Oh, It oh. is to be like. <laughs> Obsessively tell the truth. Obsessive. Like what you're up to. But Ugh. that is like, I told somebody yesterday, mm -hmm. I was like, sorry, like I just have these compulsions and they're not like to count things they're like to be accurate and not deceive anyone right and try to be and then she was like that sounds like a really convenient compulsion and i was like in a way okay like, okay i was like fair <laughs> easily abused fair, easily know. abused Ugh. yeah yeah definitely God, man. Um, well you talked about uh, in the park uh, you talked about being above reproach with your actions and stuff dude. so no one can come back around and be like the aunt told you, you know, i was at the top all the time <laughs> God, yes I fucking hate exactly that. but i mean like i was dealing with that today i was supposed to just like i was trying to like send a text of encouragement nice but every time I would be like, I don't know, <laughs> this is coming off in a weird way. And then my text, I looked at like how long my text was. And it was like four pages long. And I was like, I'm going to make this person think I'm a stalker. But you do that <laughs> anyway. It's, it makes people feel special because usually it's just like, uh, hey, how's it going? Hey, everything's cool. Okay, cool. Bye. But, but you're like, hey, let's be real about this. You know? I know. And I try so hard, but it's like the fear. It's, it's never going to be enough. Like, well, you, there you go. You have to... Yeah. Put a lid on it. Yeah, you have to put a lid on it because, <laughs> like, so, um, somebody told me mm -hmm. like recently, they were mm -hmm. like, compulsions do not actually alleviate anxiety because they're not. It's like drinking diet soda. <sighs> it's not like actually you're not actually assuaging the anxiety. Mm. You're just like doing a thing to hold it over. So it's like the diet pills of morality. You know what I mean? Holy crap! That's <laughs> like, insightful. I mean. If anything, you're perpetuating your problem. Exactly, yeah, that's good. because you're wow. instead of dealing with the standard, yep. you're just trying to like be better. You're trying to like be better at getting to an impossible goal instead of changing the goal. Do you say sorry a lot? 
like when you're Imp annoyingly much. for no reason sometimes? for no yeah I have do. you ever just been walking down the street and you see a person walk by you and you just say sorry just for like <laughs> like you're on their way or not at all for existing yeah. just like you're like oh i that? might have been in your way it, and oh so God, or i'll yes. like try to um oh apologize in advance so that <laughs> I'm the one who looks noble uh, for like being insightful. accountable. Wow. Um, it, can you give us an example? Oh my gosh. That's I, awesome. So I like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like, oh, okay. Like if I say something that I'm unsure if it was insensitive or accurate, mm. I will straight up text my friends like three page text oh, messages that are like, yeah. hey, I was just worried about this like one thing that I said, so I just wanted to clear it up and oh, let you know yeah. that I'm sorry that I like did that. And nine mm -hmm. times out of 10, it's like a, so I mean, saying it's selfish is kind of oversimplifying it, but it's- Is it like you projected onto them? I projected onto okay. them and Easy I also do. like needed their reassurance that like I'm a good person. <sighs> yes. I Dude, get what you mean, man. it's real. But I mean, like, what about you? Like, I feel <sighs> like talking to you is mm -hmm. like looking in a verbal mirror because you also <laughs> you do you you'll be like, yeah. sorry, it's not the right word. Yeah, right. And I do that all the time. Just want to be understood, you know. But, yeah. But will like we ever deep... be fully understood? No. 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 Amen. Dude, you won't. You know. It's scary. <laughs> I'm wondering. You know, I'm wondering if like. If, if you say something that is that is potentially unkind, because there's this whole kind movement, and it's like, just be Whoa. kind, just be nice. No, <laughs> what if there are a lot of times that you, the correct response is to not be kind or Dude. not be nice. Dude, okay. What, what's up with that? Uh, the nice, I see like people mm -hmm. wearing shirts. Uh, positive vibes only, <laughs> fuck you, seriously. <laughs> What's gonna happen when your dog dies? There ain't no positive vibe happening, you know? Ow! You're fucking sad. I love God, that. <laughs> positive vibes only. Get out of oh, town. You. I've definitely seen somebody in a like positive vibes only shirt, like God. screaming at Starbucks because oh, they man. asked I get for down on the ground like this a lot. Cause it's just like, yes. I know what you mean. <laughs> you need your iced caramel latte, which I need, cause I like that iced chai, but yeah, they're like, Positive vibes only. Let the fire come out of my mouth. You don't have the damn drink fast enough. Exactly, dude. Well, because, but <laughs> what people were after, maybe in the moment that mm -hmm. they bought that shirt, yes, they were imagining themselves. And maybe this is like me, philo like giving too yeah, much philosophical go. credit to let's like the world. But they, in that moment, they were imagining like their best possible self and hey. like their best yes. like iteration of the world and they s mm. looked at that shirt and they said yeah i can embody that i would yeah, yeah exactly you know? and there's nothing wrong with idealism so long as we understand that it's just like um an ideal yeah. <laughs> and not maybe an achievable reality teach people to make their own decisions and if they make them it's like they want to know something i'll talk about it you know what i mean Dude, that's the key i think that's that's it man basically like when <clears throat> i was a young wart hog um <laughs> <laughs> sorry i always want to say oh, that's good i shit. was a young uh, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like an after school special <laughs> i just like did bad things God and like ran dang. with the wrong crowd. I'm glad you did it. Dude, yeah. I honestly am too. And I used to envy people so much that were, I thought, mm -hmm. good. Like the other girls in my class who were mm -hmm. like in all the AP classes, but they weren't like the exception to the AP class. They oh. were just like normal and mm -hmm. beautiful and straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like oh, all excellent. of the things, all of the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have like a mohawk and a corn t-shirt. Did you? I did have a mohawk. Come on! 
I had a mohawk. Wait. It like got me really stoked. It became I did too. a rat tail. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that was a good, that was a stupid joke. Go ahead, yeah. No, it wasn't a stupid joke. Thanks. I was like, I'm so gullible that I was like, oh, really? Why did you choose to shave it all off? <laughs> oh, I didn't choose. Oh, no. no. We'll brainstorm about your mullet. Yes. <laughs> no, tell us what you were saying. Too. Okay, okay, was okay, good. okay. I, like I was something. like, I, I envied people mm -hmm. that were quote unquote like naturally effortlessly mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. but I just had a lot of impulse for destruction because surprise, I was an angsty kid. Yep. And so, I don't know, I, I look back on myself and I think like, was I really like this scary, evil mm. drug addict or was I just like a really scared child? Yeah. That, you know, yeah. and like, yeah. I think, Oh, that's wonderful. That, that like touched my heart. Dude. That's, yeah, that's really good. That's it's good information. Dude, it's Just for people. Right. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like we hold ourselves accountable. I mean, there is a point where you should hold yourself accountable, oh, but yeah. especially oh, for like yeah. the things that happen to us when we have no idea like what yeah. to do with those feelings. I started going to this one church, mm -hmm. which I was an absolute why did you start going to the church? Because you wanted to be good? Dude, no. Okay. Here's what happened. Mm -hmm. I started hanging out with my boyfriend, who is a really great guy. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel really bad. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> um, but As we like, see. Yeah, that's my boyfriend, great. when I was little, I was like, maybe no one will know. Oh, um, oh, that's got to be a tough thing to fucking reconcile, man. It's like, I don't know. Uh, we both like Halo. Let's hang so out. I'm sorry, that's it. I'm gonna stop making jokes. This is incredible, go ahead. Yeah, it's great. So it's I great. started hanging it's out great. with him mm -hmm. a lot and mm -hmm. he was like, you should really come to this like youth group thing. And that's I was cool. a complete, I was trying to find a not swear word to say, I was a dick. I was a dick to the people <laughs> at that youth group, I, but they ended up being like some of the greatest folks uh. for me to meet because I was, ba I basically showed up to youth group and I was like, if God exists, then how do you explain this? And <laughs> dude, you're fine. I that was, was just, punk. Yeah, right? it was punk. Sorry. I was just like there with my mohawk asking them why. God, or so maybe cool. I didn't have a mohawk at that point. Anyway, hey, that's fine. and for the first time, somebody looked at me in the face and was like, I don't know, but I'll think about it and I'll try to figure out what I think about that question and I'll tell you next week. I don't know if you remember, you probably do, but like back all the like Christ Corey. Christ core? Yeah, the like, like Christ core. Well, yeah, and even a little before that, but uh. I feel like if you found like people who were into that type of stuff, the mm -hmm. theology was like basically uh. like neo Calvinism. It was militant. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, well, but it was under the guise so weird. of honesty. And it's true. It's true that like, I don't know. Like, yeah. It, yeah. To, to like, Everybody being so obsessed with the like emotional mm -hmm. instead of the like mindful and like universality of the church. Sure. Like yeah. when people would just be like, mm -hmm. I'm broken, I'm nothing, I'm a worm, I'm absolutely like filthy rags. I mean, there's like so many verses that people would like rattle off. And then it, it's almost like this weird like junky thing yeah. where it's like yeah. the low. Shaming. It's like shaming because then you get to the end and it's like, oh, but there's redemption and grace. And yes. then like, I would do it too. Same. Like just Same. weep and just be like, it's oh like, yeah. It's like, get off your cross. Yes. You know, and I, and I mean that in the most encouraging way possible because you're not the savior of the planet Dude. in, that, in yeah. that realm, but they want you to but live Ryan, Jesus. You, it's like, I can't save the damn world. I can't even get out of bed right. Dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, but Ryan, you're supposed yeah. to take up your cross and follow me, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, that's not a joke. No. Well, I'm following you. But it's just, <laughs> it's, it's not even a criticism of like that mm -hmm. verse or whatever. It's mm -hmm. more a criticism of how people will like decontextualize yes. and internalize them in weird ways because you're right, dude. Mm. Like nobody is gonna be Jesus. No. And Thank no, God. no Thank like God. nobody yeah. is gonna be also, I didn't realize this. I um, mm -hmm. have a couple of friends who are like uh, practicing Buddhists. Mm -hmm. And like, I was reading through like the Eightfold Path and I was mm -hmm. like, hmm. What's number one? This sound, oh my gosh. I think it's life is suffering. Yes, right. Life is suffering. 
first thing you have to accept. But I was like, it's, a, it's amazing how much like this too has been decontextualized yeah. um, and turned into like a caricature, caricature of itself because mm -hmm. I think people think of like, I mean, I'm probably way out of my depth and like you should- Keep going. No, I'm not. Okay, well, yes, I will. I know that I, in the limited amount that I know about Buddhism, I know obviously like the stereotypes of it. And then mm -hmm. when I was talking to these people that like practice it, mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, there's all these different, like, people that disagree about interpretations and practices and denominations. I was like, wow, Everywhere. it's almost like all interpretation of God done by humans is going to be mutable and, like, and flawed skewed. and skewed yeah. and, like, or whatever. Like, you know, mm. it's just, it almost felt very relieving to be like, mm. no one, <laughs> no one will understand at all yeah. and we all like try so hard but we all try so hard <laughs> that's why like it's easy to cultivate like mercy for people mm -hmm. because well, that's good they're by just knowing that like they're doing the thing that they think is right mm -hmm. and they legitimately whether they're motivated by fear or mm -hmm. conviction that's that's it for them i was packing a bag for a tour today mm -hmm. and it occurred to me that like when i would pack mm -hmm. It used to take me hours because we I talked about, yeah, go ahead. That's so interesting. Go I would ahead. like obsess about like the first time I went to Europe, I brought like one pair of socks. My <laughs> manager loves to tease me about it in a sweet way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a, he's like, remember, he like, should. you're doing so good. <laughs> you you used you know. to only bring one pair of socks. I brought one pair of socks and like wow. two shirts and a hoodie mm. because I was like, I can't let the things I own end up owning me and I can't need these possessions. And if I have to travel with more than a backpack, I've never really toured with more than a backpack. Mm. If I have to, then I'm like not living up to my ideals. Mm -hmm. I'm way too attached to this material mm. world. And I just like look back with <laughs> trying to be so gracious to my former self. Like, mm. man, you really thought that like adherence to your ideals was like so important. Mm. But that's the thing about like obsessive thoughts is that they're not logical right, because we right. put we got gas from gas stations the and that's entire okay. tour yeah, that's, that's right. okay yep dude dude i think i, I you're you're i i like that type of uh, that line of thought because <laughs> no one is that virtuous across all dimensions right so it's like if you try even okay i'm gonna hit this one we'll see if people get pissed about this <laughs> okay veganism N so, nope i'm same i know? stopped I stopped being vegan. I eat like why? Some I'll tell you why. Yep. yep. I'm not about to say the protein thing. That's honestly so annoying when people are like, "How on earth will you get your protein?" Uh, <laughs> Damn, right. dude, it is 2019. There's a million ways yeah, to get you protein. Get pro <laughs> I stopped being vegan because I had yeah. this I was like projectile vomiting. What? Um, the first time I went to Japan, mm -hmm. I was projectile vomiting the day before I was supposed to get on the plane. Oh. And I had this crazy like stomach thing and I was so sick. Mm -hmm. I remember being like Again, my manager, Sean, yep. love him. Yep. Um, I was like curled up in so much pain mm -hmm. on a train in mm -hmm. Shibuya station. Were there snakes on it? I wish. I'm sorry. I wish <laughs> that there were anyway. snakes on Go, that. Yes, um, that was stupid. <laughs> it wasn't stupid. It was <laughs> very pure and I Thanks. brought me joy. <laughs> good, good, um, good. We're helping each other. We're You're helping each other. <laughs> But okay, my, go ahead. Yeah, my yeah, manager yeah. was like, look, I've heard that yogurt helps stomach aches. Will you please just try some of the yogurt from this family mart? Try to eat some. And I like went up to the cash register in shame and like <laughs> bought some yogurt and it made my stomach feel better. Good. And I was just like, wow, that was like an insane thing that I just cried about eating this yogurt <sighs> because I was like, dairy is rape. And like all of the like oh, meat is no. murder. And I, you think about the, the rhetoric of uh, cruelty free living, mm, but like, is good. it, mm. dude, think about good luck. how like the restrictions on what you can buy with SNAP and EBT. Yep. So yep. think about somebody trying to feed their family on SNAP or EBT right. and right. you telling them that meat is murder when they make Tyson chicken. Dude. Like think about that, dude. that's actually not <laughs> even oh, cool. And also like- That's anti-human. There was definitely mm -hmm. a book that I read mm -hmm. about like gospely anarchy that what? for about a month I was like, I must make my shoes out of old sticks I find oh on the ground goodness. and own nothing. 
Oh. Because, like, that's truly what yeah. you would be doing if you wanted to detach from a system that's evil. And if you participate in it, then you're complicit in it. But I was consumed. Wow. Like, but, yeah. but, like, what good are you doing, folks, if you walk around, like, right. consumed? And what if, you walk, what if you need to walk somewhere that your damn stick shoes won't uh, <laughs> allow you to walk there? Dude, absolutely. What are you going to do? Absolutely. You're living a goddamn prison. I know. It's all these it's little crazy. micro prisons, man. Yeah, dude. A homeless man asked me to buy him a Mountain Dew one time, and the yep. thought that ran through <gasps> my head was like, oh, no, Pepsi is evil. And then I was like, but that homeless guy wants a Mountain Dew. Right. So, like. <laughs> so it turns into piety and just complete judgment. Dude. Under, under the guise of virtue, it blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind, man. It's Just like so screaming. Crazy. Well, and like. <sighs> hey, um, don't look at this. So we, excuse me, got a sponsorship, which I'm very happy about. Um, from Jerry's Artorama in East Nashville there. And um, just check all this out. This is their Lucas brand paint, and I use it all the time already. And also, by the way, this is just some glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, very thankful to Jerry's for sponsoring Make It Perfect. <clears throat> and if you haven't been into Jerry's in East Nashville there on Gallatin, go in there, tell them we sent you, and say hi to to to. to the people that work there, they do really great framing. They frame stuff for me and they're just ready to help you and joke around with you and be a normal human being in an art place, you know? So Jerry's Art Around East Nashville. Okay. Tell me if, hmm? the, it, was it like incredibly scary to start to unravel? To break off of that? To think that, oh man, the things that were governing my entire existence that I thought were insulating me from doing bad things, mm -hmm. Th maybe that's not even right. Like maybe I made that up and like, maybe I'm like, I can let go of this. It's freeing and liberating, but it's mm -hmm. also like, is it scary? It is Because stuff has changed a lot for you and, and pr is yep. continually changing. You know, it, it, I mean, you're right in, in, in the way that it was when I started to really think about what I believed in a spiritual sense, I started to think, <clears throat> okay, what about Christianity? or any other religious tradition, do I actually think can help humankind? And mm. if I start to think too much, which a lot of times the, how do I say this? Um, run of the mill evangelicalism will say, don't think too much about it. D because <laughs> if you start thinking too much about it, you might realize that A, it's not true, that's number one, or B, it's different than what they're teaching you, or C, do I need to go to another tradition? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But what they don't want is, uh, that's not true, I don't wanna say they don't want this. Being an individual in a collective, no way. You have to assume the collective idea, Dude. and if you think something different in the collective, then you are an oppressor, that is evil. Dude. That is evil. Yes. You have to think different things, you have to. I didn't know like what I was doing like I was in college mm -hmm. I didn't know what church Who to go does? to <laughs> right. no well and I mean yeah. still I yeah. will talk to people and be like uh, mm. I was in college I didn't know what I was doing right. but like I feel like when I die I'll mm. be like it turned out okay I still don't know what I'm doing like I have no clue there's no point where you like all of a sudden figure it out right but like oh, I started man. going to a church where mm. first of all it blew my mind it was like this female pastor it was an episcopal mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. there was no rock band Killer. and i was love like it. i actually Let's do that. love <laughs> this <laughs> yes that's i wonderful. love that there's no rock oh, band yeah. no smoke i was like yeah, yeah no flashing lights <laughs> oh, um, which is not bad okay right. so i'm it's not inherently bad to no. exp i mean like you can experience that people you, you can know? experience yeah. that you can and it is how a lot of people choose to and even myself like i love mm -hmm. a good honestly mm -hmm. I love a good freaking like rock out worship jam. I used to shred up there in the praise band. That was me. Oh, that's awesome. I'm not judging it at all. I'm just Great. saying it's, a, it's an archetype that happens. And I was relieved because I had only ever thought of being able to serve in like mm. the musical sense. Mm. And then all of a sudden I was like, I guess I'll learn how to bake cookies for Excellent. this 
potluck with a bunch of people that are at least 50 years older than me. Which is probably helpful. Dude, it was very helpful and it like built a lot of community. But mm. I remember I had my freaking mind blown. She, there's like so many gay people, like out gay people mm. at that church. Mm -hmm. People that were not being tolerated. They were like actually just human uh, beings. And they active were active in the church. And then I was like, all right, I can stay here for a while. And I had like lunch or coffee or something with the woman who was the vicar at the time. So we hung out and I remember saying something. She was like, so what do you, like, what kind of is your faith background? And like, give me a little insight about you. And I was like, oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. like we need God because, you know, first of all, total depravity of man, everybody knows that. And she was like, I don't believe that. And oh. then I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, that was the first thing I was like, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't Did you think to she like, was going to attack you? She, or I, I'm sorry, like yes. hyper offended? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. she was like confused. She was like, why are you sorry that we disagreed? <gasps> and I was like, I don't understand what's happening right now. Like, I, that because we like disagreed. I didn't know it needed explanation. We disagreed. Yeah, she looked at me straight in the face and she was like, I just don't think that God made a creation to that he knew was going to be pieces of shit just so they could run around being pieces of shit. Huh. And I know it's more complex than that, sure, but sure. I think that the oversimplification, it. because not everybody has the like time or even mm -hmm. like knows or wants to like parse through intense theology mm -hmm. and people just take this oversimplified thing and it's walk around. It becomes a meme. It becomes almost. a meme yeah. of theology. And then right. you have That's like scary. you and I were raised in a evangelical tradition yeah. where like, we're just bad. We just, <laughs> we just know fundamentally. And I mean, like, this is a lot of like, mm. I didn't think I had a negative experience with religion. And mm. it's be because I was like, yeah, like, it's all about grace. And like, God right. forgives you, even though you're a piece of crap. God. And the like, unlearning that rhetoric mm. is so important. I was like, oh, you know, that's I, why I think I'm, I'm bad. No, go what, ahead. You think you're bad because of that. So yeah. you're having to undo those things. Yeah, dude. That's great. I mean, well, good place to be. You know what I mean? It's a good place undo to be. Undo it. But it's hard. I mean, like, Scary, I'm sure you hard, still for sure. have. Around sex. Yep. Around, around uh, relationships with uh, females and um, <clears throat> because you leave room for the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Dude. Like don't get, and, and I, check this out, Julian, this is getting pretty crazy. I do, I have the tick where I do that number to like, to yeah. genitals on everyone. So you bring that into the church. And am I saying, I, I, I will say that I think it is some sort of, uh, I mean, it's a psychological stronghold due to upbringing of alcoholic parents and just like, like, fight or flight all the time. So yeah. something's coming around the corner, you know what I mean? So it's like, I have to, I have to stay alert. And I think that's where these ticks come from, Yeah. partly. But some of it, the sexual thing started to happen after I got into the church and everybody put such an emphasis on that is bad. So the stress around sex and the acceptance of sex and talking about sex in the church is doing a disservice to the people that are in the church that have this ideological view of what it should look like and be. Dude. It's it, dude. It's, 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 it's so dangerous. Distru it's, it's, it is dangerous and it's very destructive. Have you, yeah. I wish you would read, mm. I, I think I told you about this book too, but I'm just like on Do it. it. Uh, Nadia Bowles Weber wrote a bunch of books, Accidental Saints, I think is one, Pastrix, and uh, oh. she wrote this book mm -hmm called Shameless, that's about yeah. like our cultural, religious relationship in like Western Christianity mm. with sex and how the repression oh, is dude. like so, she basically just like talks to a whole bunch of people that grew up in the church and tries it's to like- psychological birth control. Dude. You know? It is wild. And I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm not saying that it isn't beneficial to take, take sex especially promiscuous sex seriously and the fact uh, the idea that it could destroy people if you engage in it compulsively without regard it is it, it's important the without regard part yeah. is what's so important because it seems like mm -hmm. hmm. let me like yeah think about it think about how okay. i want to say this sure. it's the uh 
if you want to break it down to like values or whatever, like for from any religion, like any religion standpoint, it's that same thing of piety you were talking about, mm. where what it seems like to me, the, um, the mentality around sex should be, is like, and it's it's crazy because it almost seems like it's become polar instead of a collaborative effort to be like, how can we actually be kinder to each other? Yep. It's like sort of the schism or dichotomy between intensely um, religious f folks mm. who are like complete abstinence only way yeah. and then the like i think they are terrified by the idea of sex positivity but like really opening up the conversation around sex is like makes people more communicative yeah. and more aware also uncomfortable though very uncomfortable which is kind of good but it's it wouldn't good. make them uncomfortable mm -hmm. if they hadn't had it like repressed and demonized and if it didn't make them so uncomfortable and if it wasn't such a taboo, like mm -hmm. you'd think people would be m more communicative about yeah. things that are really important, like right. consent <laughs> and like all oh. of that, because it wouldn't be this like fool's guessing game that's like mm -hmm. very secretive and, and well, shame driven. Mm -hmm. The consent thing is puzzling to me because I, I think it comes down to if, if someone has an idea of what consent is and they have that idea in their mind which hopefully they do and then the other person doesn't quite know or uh, what am i trying to say they have a different viewpoint of what consent is and hey it could it could be in 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 same sex relationships anyone you know yeah. so it's like you have an idea and and thank you for rolling with me with this like you have an idea of what consent is and then a potential partner may have an idea of what consent is and then just so happens they don't completely line up then what happens with how do you how do you work with it not lining up you talk you, you talk. have to talk yes, about it you talk and i mean but there's also sexual like um like it's almost sexual tension like how are you going to figure out if you're attracted to this person it's so blurry sometimes yeah you know? and but that's the thing that mm -hmm. you're getting at when you say like you have to talk about mm -hmm. it if you are if somebody's like body language doesn't line up in their mind and in your mind, right. how are you gonna, do, unless you are explicitly like addressing that, like you but just, do, but you and to do that, you have to dismantle all of this weird repression that's like, no, that's an off limits thing. So in a way, the, what did you say earlier? Spiritual birth control? Oh yeah. You, like where that, you were just yeah. like, yeah, it, it's a way to like control people out of fear, but mm -hmm. it ends up just the same way as like the, what you said abortion about the OCD thing. stuff too. Yeah, well, the OCD stuff, but yeah. like the, mm -hmm. what is the actual good and what is the perceived like compliance with a social norm? So like the thing about abortions, like they're yeah. not preventing abortions, they're preventing safe abortions. So by, you're not discouraging people from having sex. Mm -hmm. They're going to have sex. They're not gonna have the vocabulary to talk about it. Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. And they're go you're gonna run into like all this weirdness where there are there's probably so many not probably there are mm -hmm. like so many people out there that are socialized with this weird mm -hmm. concept of like entitlement to like dudes and even women like entitled sure. to other people's bodies. That's incredible. And they That's don't. Incredible. Yeah if we would just talk you know what right. I mean like yep. if we wouldn't put such a weird emphasis on one thing right but it was even like I don't know it was that whole other element because like I didn't want to be queer for so long or like not didn't want to be queer I was so afraid to tell people that I was queer and then I came out and it wasn't like it wasn't novelized in a mm -hmm. way like my church was really cool with How it. Old were you when you came out? I was like 15 my Got dad it. was awesome sure, about it sure, sure. I don't know it like I mean I tell the story all the damn time but it's so cool like I started crying I was like I'm gonna go to hell and oh. then my dad like got this big Abingdon and Sons like annotated Bible and spent like straight up over an hour being like here's where it says that God loves you and here's where it says that God made you on purpose and like I was just like dad oh, he's the best that's a blessing. but like then mm. I didn't have because it's because queerness is so often collapsed with its sexual manifestation. Mm -hmm. Like instead of just queerness being 
part of your identity in it and it manifesting itself in like all these other ways that aren't the performative like sexual thing mm. it's just like mm. oh so queerness equals you are attracted to women or like it was like over compressed for me and because it's attached to such a like sexual thing i never i had no idea about like i still called things gay when i like got to college because mm -hmm. i just didn't mm -hmm. i just hung out with like dudes mm -hmm. And I was very socially inept. And then I, mm. start, I like made all these like female queer friends when I was in college and like woke up to the fact sure. that like there's- That could be hurtful. Yeah, or, or like- I do that from time to time. There's still. like political yeah. Yeah. implications and like all these things and theories of like how I should behave in this world. But do you go along with every single one of them? No. Right, because no you're one an individual. Does. Yeah. Yes, no yeah, one yeah. can. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's better. That's so cool. Not no one does, know? but no one can. Because what if you? Let let me let me recap what you said. Because you said you said some stuff that had some really good weight to it. So. The way that you viewed. Your sexuality, through the church, was blocky. Yeah. And it was without was without. Um, Nuance. Detail or nuance, yeah. right. So, and as you, move, as you moved into college, from what I heard, you, you hung out with a bunch of dudes and still, the reference you used was still called things gay. <laughs> so the, it's pretty awesome to hear. I did know, still call things yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because I just didn't. And then you met the, the, the your. Some like queer female right. people and just started like, started noticing things about myself that I was mm -hmm. still, I was basically just like trying to step into a cis white dude heterosexual mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. and just be that kind of person. I see. Like, I see. you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't have yeah. any like yeah. awareness, but I think it's because like I didn't, I didn't want to explore mm -hmm. what queerness sure. meant yeah. because I was yeah. just trying to like, I don't know. Were you trying, can I ask you a couple yeah, questions? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Were you, were you, was there a part of you that wanted to assume the role of the, of the cis white dude? I don't think, because I've never actually felt like, I've never felt like I would fit more in that identity. Got and it. so I don't mean like bodily or like yes. I didn't feel at home in my body. I've always like identified as a woman. Or the mind frame even. The mind frame, okay. exactly. Well, because all of my friends were dudes. And so it was sure. just like, yeah. I've- One of the pack. I am, they were like, oh, Julian's a lesbian. That's totally fine. You're just like one of us now, and you just skate with us and play music with us and just do all the things, yeah. like essentially like, uh, whatever. I hate the word tomboy in every way, but I just watched that movie. And it's oh, so I good. It. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, just like a tomboy in every mm -hmm. way, and I didn't. I don't know. Like, it felt like I was negotiating, in what context being queer would be okay, but subconsciously. Like I didn't even realize that I was doing these things. I was just like, oh, well, if I, if I can fit, if I can nestle myself into mainstream society and if I can like be the like good, mm. do good gay person, oh, <laughs> then man. maybe like everybody yeah. at church will be oh. cool. And I had this deep seated fear and I'm sure if I had just like put a name to that fear, I could have dispelled it with them. Mm but I didn't have. That's good information. Yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? Because they were like people like my dad, mm -hmm. the folks that I grew up with, like didn't, they would not have cared, but right. in, in my brain. Oh, totally. It totally. was all. It's way bigger. It's way. And it is a big thing. Yeah, it, dude. It is a big it's, thing to, to, to tell the world or whoever, your immediate world, about a, a, a change in your sexuality or, or how you're looking at it or like. Yeah. You have to show them that what you think about my sexuality is not what you think. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a weird way to put it. Yeah, that, and then you feel like, I don't know. Get ready for the machine guns. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. It's mm. scary. It's scary it stuff. And rightfully, and, and you know, like, but here's the thing. And I, I'm not trying to equate Tourette syndrome to homosexuality, okay? I would not think that you are, but cool. I understand why you needed to make that clear. I was very open about Tourette syndrome for a long time, but there was also a lot of shame around Tourette syndrome. So oh, yeah. I started going to a psychologist here in town, which has been, I've been there for seven, eight years and just started group therapy. If you want to really get into who you think you are, <laughs> go to group therapy and see how that changes. Word, anyway, word, Jesus. So, word. God, so anyway. <laughs> it so, is crazy. So no pun intended. The, 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 <laughs> 
All right, I'm done. So, no, it's great. It's great. So the psychologist started asking me. I'd have this tick right here. I'd flip off the camera. I'd you know do this. He'd be like, "What? Can you talk about that tick?" And I didn't know how to talk about the tick because no one ever asked me what how to talk about the tick. They were like, "This is just the thing you do." Yes, and but it's it's not just the thing you do. You do it for a reason. It's way down in there. Yeah. So I started talking about the tick, and when I have the tick, the middle finger. I've, I've, and, and this could change, and I, I hope it does at some point. I am, I am subconsciously objecting to an idea that I think someone might have about an idea that I'm putting forth. Dude. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like afraid like, to say no. Fuck that's you. Not, yes, but on the sneak, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I'm You're saying? You're just like because you know yeah. it's not right, right, or you know it's like not based in reality. So you have to like, yeah. I would do that. I used to, we talked about this. I don't yeah. know if you ever saw the Star Killers when I was on my like real intense thing. I don't but think I, I mean, did. Sometimes I would like. <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. We, man, I wonder mm -hmm. if I was freaking out at that worker show. But I don't like very seldom. Yeah. But when I got super super nervous, mm -hmm. I would like punch myself in the head oh, dude. for yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, it, but yeah, it was yeah. just like. A, first of all, I didn't think it was weird because I mean, mm -hmm. we grew up listening to like bands mm, like The that. Chariot and yeah. Me Without You that would like maybe not punch mm. themselves in the head, but some form of like sure. craziness or like yep. beat their guitars. And it, it was like, maybe I'm just doing this because I feel in the moment mm -hmm. and it's like intense. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know now that like, that I go to that space when I feel like you're doing something wrong. This is stupid. Everyone thinks you're stupid. Like every, like you're a liar. The things oh, you're saying yeah. are a li oh, like, yeah. I, and like I you're a fraud. You're a fraud. If there's anyone I know that isn't a fraud, it's you. <laughs> no, okay. don't you. But you hate hearing that hate because it. you're a fraud. Because I'm okay, a fraud. Yeah, right, okay. I love that we're just like screaming. <laughs> yeah, good luck with um, that. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, but go you will never, those feelings will never go away until like you personally, I could ask you, Ryan, mm -hmm. to text me that when I wake up in the morning and when I go to sleep at night. <laughs> and I wouldn't. Believe it. I wouldn't believe it. Well, but I mean, I The fact I that could, you're talking about it, you're on your way to believing it. Yeah. And it's beautiful, yes. it's beautiful, go ahead. But you have to be able to understand why you do a thing. That's the thing where like, it's true of politics. Mm. It's true of everything. <laughs> like you think you have these beliefs because, I mean, and maybe you're able to put a name to it in a very yep. um, simplified way. That's like, oh, that's how I was raised. But you don't understand like why the person that raised you, raised it's you like that. Right. You don't understand why the culture you were raised in gave you these ideas. And until huh. you start to like unpack them and like yeah. hold them right here, that helps me honestly justify mm -hmm. doing things to understand myself more. Because what are you taught also in evangelicalism? In all things, think of others as greater oh, than yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like there don't think, don't think about this body or this flesh or this mind. Mm -hmm. And then we start to like evaluate every single action that we do. Uh, like yeah. that's where the crazy comes in. <laughs> because you're yeah. like, is this good? Is yeah. this bad? Is right. this right? Is this wrong? Right. You force a dualism. Yep. And the, the, like the thing that I try to say when I notice myself doing that mm -hmm. obsessive mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. is just like, am I? Was I good today or was I bad? Do I get a gold scar? Gold scar. scar. Oh, Julia, come on. A gold <laughs> scar. Oh, that's that's going in the band name list. Oh, it's gold, gold scar. scar. Ooh, that's good. Right? That's wonderful, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, do I get a gold star or a check mark or whatever? And then I'm just like, today I was a human and I did right. human things. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Wait, um, let's talk about the art right here. Okay. Talk about that. <laughs> this is, I have to remember to pack for Europe, and it's probably unintelligible. <laughs> well, and you then, know what it says, Oh, right? this says reply to emails. Sweet. Do you dude. believe me that that says reply to emails? <laughs> I mean, you just pulled that out of thin air. I believe you. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, it might... You can see that, look, mm -hmm. R-E-P-L-Y. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just have the messiest handwriting of all time. I don't want to paint anymore. You don't? No, I want to talk. All right, <laughs> word. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm. Wow, you just like articulated the thing that you wanted. That was so amazing. <laughs> and this is a painting show. <laughs> but then the, the voices in my head, uh, meaning 
the accuser is like, oh, but this is a painting show. And you actually said in your introduction that this is a painting show. So why are you not we, painting all the time? Fuck you. We painted. You know? Yeah, we did paint. We freaking yeah. painted. We made yeah, some we, stuff. I was yeah. honestly probably about to make this worse. It's like at that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's yes. like, I'm just doing yeah. random yeah. stuff. You were, you, were hang, you hung in there. You hung in there. <laughs> and you got some great, like the colors are, the colors you chose, they're bright, they're springy and summery. They're like, it, 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 it's inviting to me. Thanks. To me. Yeah. And I don't know anything about painting. And so I was like, I'm not even going to try to make a form. Yes. I'm just going to yes, do yes. like shades. Mm, color work. Yeah. That I like. It's I like, yeah, really they're pr beautiful. pretty. And I had a lot of fun. Good. And thank Good. you for yeah. doing this. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I know. It's so oh, much fun. Man. This is such a great like concept. Cool. 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 Because you're at once you're like being mindful, mm -hmm. you're like in the present moment, but you're also like engaging mm -hmm. in things. I think maybe that's when you were saying that people come and they'll disclose things and it'll get really deep really fast. <laughs> I think it's because you're in, what's up lady? Yeah, right. <laughs> Just like. We closed. <laughs> we closed. She's like, what are they doing in there? That was beautiful. I that like that you do beautiful. this all the time because on tour, that's mm -hmm. how me and uh, my tour manager and best mm -hmm. bud Avanti mm -hmm. will just like, punctuate like a high feelings moment. It's just by yeah. being like, boom, done. Boom. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like very Put her there. Pro, yeah, right. That's awesome. But it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, this is has been Make It Perfect. This is my friend, Julian Baker. Thank you very much. We had a great, I, you had a great time? I had a great time. Put her there. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to speak for you. I love it. That was great. <laughs> oh, Julian, that was wild, dude. I know. Uh-oh.